Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode uh, 255, season 11. Today's date is September 16, 2023, and welcome to the show. On today's program, I will talk about three topics. Number one, I will talk about my memories of watching the TV variety show, The Midnight Special, that aired on NBC uh, in the 1970s. Uh, which is WMAQ TV Channel 5 in Chicago. Also, the Paragon Restaurant that was located in Oakland, Illinois. I think I talked about this restaurant before, but I'll do it again. And third, I will talk about uh, the 60th anniversary of the science fiction TV series, The Outer Limits, that uh, debuted on this day in 1963. Yeah, spooky show. Okay. So right now, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Hour After Hour Deodorant. <laughs> I remember this product. So here's a commercial from 1970. Uh, there's a woman in this commercial. Try to recognize her voice. Uh, I'll give you a hint. She was, she's a famous actress, movie actress, that is. And uh, if you don't know, I will reveal who it is after the commercial. And I'll, so sit back and relax, and I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Why the tracksuit? You kidding? Thank Between you, housework, kids, and shopping, I put in five miles a day. And your deodorant? That's hour after hour, double dry. The long distance deodorant. Got a special formula that helps stop wetness and odor mile after mile. And won't we'll walk out before the day is over. <laughs> hour after hour, the long distance deodorant. Double dry or regular. This episode is brought to you by Google. The Google Cybersecurity Certificate provides the necessary skills to begin a career in cybersecurity. Visit safety.google forward slash cyber workforce today. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Hour After Hour Deodorant. Uh, this is this was from 19, excuse me, this was from 1970. The actress who spoke in the commercial is none other than Diane Keaton. Uh, very pretty lady. And uh, she's famous for her role in Annie Hall, you know, with Woody Allen. That movie was funny. It was cute. That came out in 1977. I never saw it in the theater. I saw it on television uh, once. You know, I should watch it again. But it's cute and it's charming. And uh, I love the New York locations like that. Uh, she's still acting, you know, yeah, sort of. I haven't seen her in a while. But, yeah, she's still acting. You know, uh, there was a movie that I forgot the name of the movie that she was with Jack Nicholson. And they were wonderful. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Well, when you look at Jack Nicholson, you start laughing. <laughs> you can't help it. But she's she's awesome. You know, like I said, very beautiful. Okay. All right. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned I I'm going to talk about three things. Uh, the variety show, the midnight TV variety show. Excuse me, the midnight special. Also, the Paragon Restaurant that was located in, that was located in Oakland, Illinois. And also the 60th anniversary of the science fiction TV series, The uh, the Outer Limits. Before I get started, I want to mention something. Uh, yesterday, I posted a picture of myself on social media. This is very important to me. Um, well, there's a, another thing I want to mention after that. Uh, you know, when you go through life, you, you face disappointments from people or circumstances uh people are the worst you know they make you feel rejected you know small inferior you know adequate you know things they say or they don't approve what you do most of the most of the time they don't know what they're talking about because they, they see what you do that makes you happy they don't understand and then they come out and be very very nasty say why are you wasting your time doing this do something important do something that's worthwhile do something that makes a lot of money well yes i understand but i am doing something very that makes me happy a lot 
you know, and uh, I'm here to entertain people. And um, about 90, let's say 98% of that is very positive and people love it. You know, I do this every day, posting on Band Chicago then, you know, on my Facebook page, doing the podcast, which I've been doing now for about eh, two and a half years. And uh, most of the feedback is wonderful. You get a couple trolls, you know, I get, but I get messages every day from people saying, you do a good job. Thank you. You make me smile and that's great. But, you know, you do what you love and you'll love doing it and uh, always be positive, you know. Don't listen to trolls. Don't listen to negative people. If you hang around with negative people, stay away from them, you know, as much as you can. Uh, Family members is a little hard because you have to talk to them, you know, especially parents, you know. But Well, my, you know, my dad passed away, so um, he was, I won't go into that. He he was an odd man. (laughs) No, but I love my father. And uh, because he was very supportive for me and my mom and my brothers, you know, putting us through school and put a roof on our he- over our heads, which is wonderful. And my mom is still alive, so she doesn't really understand what I do, kind of, but she's a very supportive in a way. <laughs> What's the Greek way? <laughs> yeah, I, I won't go into that. But uh, it's wonderful. You know, I'm not here to fish out compliments, no. I'm here to do what I like to do. It keeps me busy, you know, because I don't want to sulk all day long because of my prostate cancer, you know, and going. I'm still recovering, you know, but I don't want to feel sorry for myself or, you know, be sad all the time. I, I do get sad at times, but I got to move on. I got to live. We all do. We have to, you know, just keep going you know if you think if you're positive that's like uh, men- it's for your mental health and you feel good about that okay uh the second thing i want to talk about is today i posted for a uh you know for donations for the prostate cancer organization i did this last year so i donated some money today and i posted it on facebook and i think instagram too so because of my birthday you know i'm doing this uh i will be 60 Next month, on October 4th, which I'm not looking forward to it because, oh my God, I'm an old man. <laughs> it seems like yesterday I was at Correa's uh, elementary school and I was having lunch <laughs> with, my, with the kids, you know, with my classmates. So <laughs> time flew. It really does. But uh, I'm looking forward to it, you know, just be healthy. You know, I'm still do. I'm still walking, but a little bit, you know, my feet hurt a little bit. So I'm toning it down a bit, Uh, not every day and uh, just eating right, you know, cutting down, you know, no, I'm doing this, uh, just dieting, regular diet, no programs, no fancy stuff, just uh, cut down. It works. It really does. Willpower really works. Okay. Now for some fun. <laughs> Sorry to be morbid. So I'm going to talk about the TV variety show, The Midnight Special. Oh, this is very, I had great memories of watching this show. You know, and, uh, you know, it, it celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, well, actually, the first uh, spe- the first TV show that aired was August 19th, 1972. That was the pilot. Uh, but then it started its regular series on February 3rd, 1973. And it aired on NBC, uh, WMAQ TV Channel 5 in Chicago. And uh, let's see what else. Um, so uh, it was hosted by, well, they had uh, host, they had um, guest hosts, but the, mo- the the one performer that, get, uh, that hosted the most was singer Hel- Helen Reddy, you know, who sang I Am Woman. <laughs> I like the song. She did that for, uh, from July 1975 through March 76. She was really that. Uh, but 
the announcer and the host of the show was none other than Wolfman Jack. Oh, when you heard his voice, you know it was him. You know, he was when I was a little kid, when I saw him, he was scary to me. Very scary. You know, I thought he was a real wolfman. You know, isn't that funny? No, he wasn't a wolf man. <laughs> What, uh, there, there are photos of him when he sp sprout out fangs, <laughs> but I think he was kidding, you know. But uh, when I first uh, saw Wolfman Jack, was on the Midnight Special. Then I saw the the 1973 movie American Graffiti. He was in that movie. He was great. I love that movie. Oh, it's a wonderful movie with the mu with the 50s music and all that. Oh, that was cool. Uh, the theme song for Midnight Special was performed by Johnny Rivers, and it was like a folk song. You know, oh, it's uh, that was appropriate to you know to use this song for the um, for the show. The Midnight Special featured musical acts uh, performing live. Um, I don't think it was really live. I think it was taped. You know, and then they showed uh, you know acts. They showed about maybe a lot of them. Really, they did. You know, and uh, let's see. Sometimes they shared, uh, they aired vintage footage of older acts, you know, like uh, Bill Haley and his comics. Probably, I don't know if the Beatles were featured, maybe, or the Rolling Stones. I don't know if the Rolling Stones appeared. Maybe they did. Sometimes uh, the show uh, aired uh, had comedians to perform, like, for example, Bill Cosby or Richard Pryor or Andy Kaufman or George Carlin, you know, and uh, Steve Martin appeared. Yeah, he did. This is during the 70s, you know. Uh, the producer of the show was none other than Bert Sugarman. He produced that. Uh, he's still alive, you know. And the reason he he wanted to do this is after the Tonight Show that, starred John, uh, that hosted by Johnny Carson, after the show, there was nothing. You know, they, uh, I think Channel 5 went off the air or they put something on, not like today. I mean, now it's 24 hours a day. They put on like movies or infomercials or repeats of shows during the, you know, that aired during the day. And uh, sometimes, you know, young people didn't, didn't have the money to uh, attend concerts, live concerts, you know. So you can watch a concert on television. So he brought this idea to NBC. Uh, they were reluctant, but they did. So they, they aired the pilot. And um, so they convinced them. And uh, it aired, like I said, the pilot aired on August 19, 1972. And uh, the performers were there. Uh, the first performers were there on, FS, on that pilot were Mama Cass, the Everly Brothers, the Isley Brothers, uh, Harry Chapin, Linda Rostad, Argent, you know, hold your head up. I, oh, I love that song. And Helen Reddy. And of course, the, the um, Wolfman Jack appeared on camera and he was the main host and the announcer. He didn't really host, but he was the announcer. He was there all the time. And they did this uh, to to encourage the youth to, when they reach 18 years old, to register to vote for the upcoming election. You know, like that. I think it was at the time where it, the voting age was lower to 18. I think it was 21 before, you know. Um, Harry Chapin performed the hit Taxi, and uh, that was a good song. Also, Rinda Rodstead performed Long, Long Time. That's a beautiful song. I like that. Of course, Helen Reddy sang I Am woman and of course uh, i don't know what the isley brothers performed or the every brothers did uh, probably their hits you know, old hits and uh of course our uh Arjun did hold your head high you know you hear that um song all the time like that and uh let's see you know and then it aired at first like at about one o'clock in the morning central time here uh, because uh, Channel 5 aired some couple of local shows. One was Tillman Tepo, Tempo. It was a talk show that featured uh, Jim Tillman, who used to do the weather on Channel 5. He, he had that show. And then I think when it went off the air, and I don't know what the other show was, they moved it from 1 o'clock to midnight. 
uh, later on. And uh, sometimes it aired at one, but it usually aired on Friday nights. Uh, then NBC had the Tomorrow Show, which hosted by Tom Snyder. <laughs> I remember this guy. I like that show. They did, Saturday Night Live did a parody on it. Dan Aykroyd did Tom Snyder, which was funny. I like that. I watched that show too. You know, maybe I'll talk about that someday. And uh, the Midnight Show, uh, not Midnight Special, had a lot of great acts, musical acts. I'll give you an example. They had ABBA, Aerosmith, ACDC, uh, the Bay City Rollers, the Bee Gees, Bay, um, David Bowie, Blondie, The Cars, one of my favorite groups. Cheap Trick were on. You know, they had that. They had the Doobie Brothers. They had ELO. ELO made the most appearances there. They did that. Fleetwood Mac, Andy Gibb, The Guess Who, The Jackson Five, Billy Joel, Elton John, Journey. I watched Journey. This is my uh, memory. I watched Journey on the Midnight Special. When they performed their hits, were like Wheels in the Sky. That's where I first saw. Oh, that was awesome! That was great. I like that, you know. And they, they perform other hits as well. Casey and the Sunshine Band, uh, Kiss, <laughs> uh, Barry Manilow, Gordon Lightfoot, Olivia Newton-John, Ted Nugent, Prince. He appeared before he got famous. You know, very famous. You know, with Purple Rain. Uh, Ariel Speedwagon, Linda Ronstand, Rare Earth, Diana Ross, Todd Rudman, Steely Dan, Rod Stewart, Tom, Donna Summer, The Thin Lizzy, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Village People, Barry White, and of course Gary Wright, who just passed away. There were others. There were a lot of them. They really were. And there was a great show. It was a great show to watch. It really was. And uh, you can f watch these um, shows on YouTube. They have them there. You know, they have selected uh, videos. You know, I, I don't know if all of them are there. No, probably not. But uh, you can uh, go to YouTube, uh, type in Midnight Special in the search engine. Boom. They'll take it there. Also, they're on DVD. I don't think all the episodes are, and I doubt it, but they have all the best performances if you care to watch, if you like, you know, and uh, it's almost, you know, so it's great memories because I used to stay up late. Sometimes I couldn't sleep, you know, when I was a teenager, so I turned on the midnight special. Or when I was a teenager, when I was at Bogan High School, uh, I went out with my friends sometimes or went somewhere, and then I'd come home about midnight or so. And I couldn't sleep. You know, I went into my room, watched the Midnight Special on my black and on my Zenith black and white TV, you know, in the bed in my bedroom. <laughs> and that was great, you know. And then I just fall asleep. Oh, that was great. That was wonderful. Okay. And then um and then it was canceled on March 27th, 1981. And then, um, then they aired a couple. Then the show that took over for a while was SCTV. That's a Canadian show. That's a comedy show that started with John Candy, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara. That was funny. I watched that too. But they aired it for a couple of years. And then Friday Night Videos came in 1983. I did a podcast episode about that show. And uh, that was great because it was music videos. And music videos were big back then in the 80s oh they were humongous popu in popularity you know like that and uh one last thing about uh wolfman jack um you know he was a famous dj he did a few acting roles you know uh besides american graffiti he was on uh on, I remember him on The Odd Couple, and uh, he was on that movie, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Spang with the Bee Gees. <laughs> he appeared on What's Happening, <laughs> you know, like that. And uh, his last um, role was Married with Children. He played himself, you know. But he, I remember him do, doing the Clear Soul commercials. He did that for Acne. I remember that, yeah, in the 70s. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, he died of a heart attack in July 1st, 1995, at the age of 57. Oh, so young. You know, and so talented. That's that voice. When you hear that voice, it's him. You can't help it. He, he had a radio DJ voice, you know, natural like that, which is cool. Okay. Uh, right now, um, yeah, that's enough for the midnight special. And then the second thing I want to talk about is the Paragon restaurant. I'll go briefly on that. Uh, I don't know when this restaurant opened. Probably in the 70s, I would imagine. And then it was a, and this was located at 4510 West 95th Street in Oakland, Illinois. It was right near uh, Christ Hospital, which where which where I was born. And uh, the food was good. I don't remember who owned it, you know, but I went there a few times and a lot of people in the, in the area did. They went there. They also went to the, um, what's it called? The Branding Iron Restaurant. Served with the ribs, the bowling, the donut holes. <laughs> I did a podcast episode about that uh, or a long time ago. Maybe I'll do it again. We'll see. Uh, the Paragon was a great place. Uh, one memory of that, of the Paragon, and I will tell you, when I graduated from DeVry Institute in May of 1986, uh, my family were there. Uh, I think one of my brothers wasn't, I, I don't know, I think he had the basketball game or something. He didn't come to graduation or something like that, which is okay. Uh, we decided to, where we were going to go eat. Uh, my uncle who was alive then, uh, he knew the owners, decided, why don't we go to the Paragon? I said, okay, we never been there. Uh, I've been there, but my parents have never been, so we went there. And so we drove um, from DeVry that was on the north side, you know, near Lane Tech. Uh, the graduation ceremony was held there. And DeVry Institute was just on the block. Um, you know, now the original building's gone. They have rebuilt everything. So we drove down there and we had some dinner and uh, I celebrated with a cocktail. I usually don't drink, so that's okay. You know, the funniest thing is my mom saw this cocktail. It was like a, like a pina colada and she took a sip of it <laughs> for curiosity's sake. She goes, oh, it's too strong. <laughs> I don't know why she did that. Couldn't stop laughing at <laughs> She didn't even ask. You know, she just did it. But the food was good. It was very good. I, I liked it a lot. And uh, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people remember the restaurant. It was a good place to hang out. A lot of people from the hospital came to eat there. You know, the, you know, I think it was open 24 hours. So they come anytime. You know, the hospital has to be open in 24 hours. So... It was just a block away. Uh, I don't know when the Paragon closed, maybe in the 90s sometime. Um, I, I've heard a rumor like the owners had, they were gambling, you know, they owned debts or something. I don't know the whole story of that, you know. And they closed it down. And uh, later on, they tore down the building. The hospital bought the property. They Now it's a parking garage. And they got a lot, a lot of parking garages there. They have it there. They have the original parking garage that's on Costner Avenue. They have another one on the north, north of there, across the street, you know, because that's a huge hospital. It's big, you know. It's a shame, you know. You know, we need more restaurants like that. Uh, the, you know, the, you know, well, they got the cafeteria. <laughs> I don't know if it's good like that. So that's a, that's a shame like that. And, uh, you know, I, I like the place very much. And uh, I did, I posted a picture of the Paragon restaurant a long time ago on down in Chicagoland. Get a lot of memories from people from the South side and like that. Also on WGN, uh, Robin, Robin Baumgartner, there's a photo of her with her family and she went there and she showed it on the T on TV. <laughs> I saw that. That was funny, you know. And, uh, yeah, I guess she liked that place, too. <laughs> and her family, that is. Okay. Right now, um, I'm going to take a break. And then I'm going to talk about the 
the TV science fiction series, The Outer Limits. So I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. Um, right now, I'm going to talk about The Outer Limits, uh, the science fiction TV series. Uh, this premiered on September 16, 1963, which is today. It was 60 years ago. It aired on ABC, which was WBKB Channel 7 in Chicago. Uh, then later on, WLS. And uh, it was like the Twilight Zone, in a way. You know, Twilight Zone was one of the first anthology series yet you know that was scary uh i don't know if it was the first but it was the most successful the first successful one i still watch it from time to time it's a it's a great show rod certainly is wonderful i like that i like night gallery better <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> i talked about night gallery a long time ago anyway um this dealt not much about uh fantasy or the super supernatural it uh it dealt with uh, science fiction and at the end of the shows, they had a plot twist. Sometimes, not always, like that. And uh, in the beginning of the program, you would see this dot on your TV screen. And the, the, the announcer would say, don't, there's nothing wrong with your television screen. <laughs> you know, and they're controlling your TV. Oh, that's scary. I saw that when I was little. Now you're like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, but this was aired in black and white. Uh, it ran for two seasons. Uh, it uh, it uh, was canceled on January 6th, 1965. It ran for, uh, it had about, how many episodes? 49, I believe. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, 40, uh, 49 episodes. And uh, one of the, the most famous episodes and the, one, the most scariest ones was called the Xanti Misfits. And uh, it was like, uh, and uh, it was like these rat-sized ant, ants with human faces, these ugly, <laughs> big ants. They looked like, like that, and they were ugly like that. And those things scared me oh, when I was a kid. You know, but it was a great uh, episode, the one, the most episode, and I agree with the, uh, with most people. It was like that. There were other famous episodes as well. I, I won't go into, you know, most of them like that. Um, well, the first episode was called "The Galaxy Bean," and uh, that was starred Robert Culp. You remember him from *I Spy*, and he did other TV shows. Uh, he was talking to an alien. Uh, he was uh, in the at first he was peaceful, but then no, it was not like that. And uh, the first time I saw this show uh, was on Channel Forty Four WSNS TV in Chicago. When the show was canceled and moved to syndication, it first aired on Channel Nine, maybe once a week, a few days a week, not every day. Uh, I didn't see it on Channel 9 because I was too young. So, and then uh, it did, maybe it did air on Channel 32 later, probably. I'm not sure. But I remember watching the show on Channel 44. When Channel 44 aired American American shows, then it went to Spanish language like that, or Telemundo. And I remember the promos of the show. I remember it was that first episode. I remember the alien walking around and all that. And it was like, oof, this is scary. And I, well, I was in grade school when I saw this, you know, and uh, I watched a few episodes and uh, I loved it. I really did. I was a little nerve. Ner it was a little nerve wracking. You know, you know, I was nervous watching shows, but it was, it's a great science fiction uh, show, and it's still it aired in reruns for years, for a long, long time. And then, uh, um, so let's see. And also, there was another um, famous episode called "Demon with a Glass Hand," and that was, uh, and it was based on a script by uh, a man. He was an American writer. His name was Harlan Ellison. And uh, that was one of the most pop one of the most popular episodes besides the one I mentioned before, 
the uh, the Xanti Misfits, but this one was good. It really was I like that. And uh, they had uh, a lot of guest stars, you know, in the show. Um, you know, a lot of famous people. And that I remember. Uh, let's see, Leonard Neboy was one. Uh, there was Warren Oates. Uh, Eddie Albert was in uh, a few of them. Yeah, Eddie Albert was in one show. Remember that. Uh, let's see, who else was in the show? Uh, no, I can't think of it. Anyway, all right. Right now, I'm going to play the theme song, The Outer Limits. And when I come back, I'll talk about a little bit more about the show. And then we'll close out the program. Okay? So, I'll, so here is the introduction of the 1963 uh, series, The Outer Limits. Thank you, everyone. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image. Make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Um, that was the theme song of The Outer Limits, if you remember, uh, with the television screen, <laughs> with the dot. <laughs> That's scary music like that. Anyway, um, it was The Outer Limits was released on BHS uh, a long time ago. And uh, it was then it was released in uh, a DVD on 2002. And in September, I bought I bought them. Yeah, I bought both seasons, you know, the complete series, and uh, I watched a couple, t- uh, a few times, uh, all of them, like that. And uh, then it came out in Blu-ray in 2018. I haven't bought the Blu-ray yet. You know, I got to buy it because it contains all of that, and uh, that's. Uh, I bet it looks nice. You know, that's. Uh, that's our thing. Um, let's see what else. Also, the uh, another uh, another. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Other uh, guest actors were on the show were Martin Landau, Martin Sheen, Bruce Dern, uh, William Shatner, Cliff Robertson, and Carol O'Connor, Archie Bunker. He was in the he was in the show too. Like that, and there were a lot of get. Um, yeah, like I mentioned William Shatner, but also Leonard Nimoy was in there, but there was James Doohan, you know, Scotty and Grace Lee Whitney, you know, a lot of uh, Star Trek people. There's a lot of Star Trek actors were in that uh, show as well. Uh, let's see. So I still watch, someday I'll watch the show, you know, if I have time. You know, I'll revisit it. Uh, it's, it's still spooky like that. Perfect for Halloween. Also, it was revived in 1995. And that aired on Showtime and the Sci-Fi Channel and then syndication. Uh, I saw one or two. It's not the same, but I like the er- the the earlier ones better. And uh, so... It was fine, but I like the the original one. I really did. And that you know, it, it was very popular and it aired from nineteen ninety-five to two thousand two. And uh so that ran for seven years. So that's great, you know. If you're a fan of that show, fine. But I think uh most diehard TV fans like me prefer the original series. Okay. All right. 
So I guess that's it for this show. Uh, I'll do a recap of what I said. Uh, I talked about my memories of watching the TV variety show, The Midnight Special. Also, the Paragon Restaurant in Oklahoma, Illinois. And third, I would talked about the 1963 TV series, The Outer Limits, which debuted on this day, September 16, 1963. Okay. Uh, this podcast will be published later on today, wherever podcasts are available, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Just hit subscribe. Excuse me. Hit subscribe. Can't speak. And you'll be notified. Also, be on my YouTube channel, Spanish Account Gun Stories. Please subscribe to that and you'll get a new episode. You can watch other episodes of my podcast. They're all there. They're all there. Also, uh, you'll be posted on my social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, which is X now. And uh, I'll post this on Instagram and uh threads you know you can copy the link it'll take you right there also it's on my blog vanishagogland.blog you know it'll take you to the you click on the link it'll take you right there uh i won't tomorrow i was thinking of doing another podcast episode but i don't think so I'm, i have to do my other podcast which is tv oblivion i haven't done one in a couple months maybe i'll do that but i will definitely do another episode this coming tuesday and we'll and i We'll see what I'll talk about. I have some time to think about it. Okay. So this is Pika Stanis, your host of Band of Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. It's a little cloudy, but it's nice. You know, I love this type of weather. And uh, just enjoy your weekend. And I certainly will. So here's bye bye for me, and here is Ray Rayner closing out the show with a little traveling music saying bye bye bye, as always. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye bye bye. <laughs>